Hey, congratulations. Uh, if you're watching this video, that means you've registered for the Training Officer Credentialing Program, or TALK as we call it here at the uh, IA International Society of Fire Service Instructors, or SOCIETY for short. And my name is Brian Ward. I'm one of the chairs for the program and lead instructors. One of the other leads you may see is uh, Lieutenant Brad French out of Dayton, Ohio. Um, regardless of who you have for your lead, um, I want to walk through real quick and kind of give you some expectations. There's a syllabus on the LMS system that walks through all the different projects and expectations. Um, you should be watching this video about a month out from the actual class date. Um, you will receive not only the credentialing aspect, but it's tied into uh, CEUs with the Columbia Southern University, um, 32 of them to be exact. and in order to be able to complete that process for both um, organizations, there's a lot of pre-work. We truly use the flipped classroom version. So you'll have very little PowerPoint type um, classroom materials. It's all gonna be presentations and discussion and networking. So please, if you haven't, check out your syllabus and look at your projects. Real quickly, I wanna run through them. Um, it, they're, they're explained in detail on the LMS website, but uh, if you have any questions, give me or Brad a call or an email. Um, it'll be on the all of our contact information's in the LMS site. So hey, real quick, the first one is working with your NFA, NFPA standards. Um, all I want you to do is to go in, create a, um, a, a web account, research one of them that's been listed that I've asked you to, uh, to pick from, and write an executive summary. Generally, these executive summaries are two to three pages, very uh, clear and concise. They don't um, go into tons of detail, but they give you enough detail. If you need to, you can brush up on the executive summary description inside the training officer's desk reference from Jones and Bartlett. That's part of this program also. Chapter five, there's a project planning sheet. Um, I give you an example, um, and I give you a, a scenario to actually to, um, to use don't overthink this. There's a template that really all you got to do is really go through the process, fill in the blanks. Um, if you have something already in place that you use at your current department, don't reinvent the wheel. Um, provide that and just tailor it to what we were looking, what we're looking for in our scenario. Uh, but don't overthink it. So if if you've never done one before, this is why we're trying to give you that. Um, give you that template, give you that, uh, it really it's you know, recognize, recognition prime decision making. We're giving you a slide tray um, so you can put it in your portfolio. The next, um, chapter seven, video presentation. The, the intent here is one, to see you know, how, for you to present in front of a, a camera, but now you gotta start working with some technology. So we want you to cut it down to a certain, I think it's five minutes. Um, and be able to break that technology apart, whether it's you know cutting, clipping, you know, editing the, the video, so it's a published um, type of document or a video. We wanna use at least two visual aids inside of that impromptu, and this is really to, one, make you use technology, two, learn to use and edit video, um, and the benefits it can have your department, but then um, also some of that, uh, how do you script out a video, so that you can start using that for your departments. It's another way of learning to where we don't have to be tied up with PowerPoints and always sending out the same materials. It's a way of breaking it up. Chapter 11, bid specifications. Um, so I give you $15,000 for a training property of your choice. I want you to be able to go, I want you to go through, I want you to research, I want you to um, figure out what are the, the um, you know, prices, what are the bid specs, you know, what are the little things you need to look for. So after you go through all the, uh, the classroom materials, I want you to actually walk through doing the bid spec, request for proposals. Again, if you already have this information for your department, you don't have to recreate the wheel. Bring it with you, but tailor it to our project. Um, so make sure it's specific, but there's no need in you recreating you know, a wheel and typing out all these different documents. But we want you to be prepared to, if you ever have to use it, and you know, hopefully you will as you move up and you know, throughout your career. Hey, you've got this in your back pocket. You've done it before. You've seen it. So that's the whole intent of why we do this today. 
Um, be prepared to present also, you know, five to ten minutes. That goes for all of these projects. We will present um, all of these projects in class. Um, chapter 14, Incident Review. Um, so what I want you to go and do here is, is the same thing. Prepare for a presentation, five to ten minutes, and select an incident that was locally, or maybe it's one that's nationally, and I want you to review it um, and, act, and prepare as if you were going to teach it to your department. Um, now, granted, you only have five to ten minutes, but, uh, but go through. Look at you know, what were the recommendations? What were the NFPA standards? How could this truly affect our department? And what do we need to, need to do to correct it? Make sure it doesn't happen. Um, you do want to make sure that's an event that's occurred in the last 15 years to kind of want it to be uh, relevant to what, what we do. Um, if there's any con uh, command staff or department lawyer reviews, and that's kind of the mindset you should always be thinking about is who's going to be reviewing this. Um, command staff and lawyers, that means we need to make sure that it's all of the details are uh, I's dotted, T's crossed. What may be the obstacles or challenges that would be encountered with us implementing this program? And then chapter 16's resumes. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to go through the resumes that I've given you, and you have two training officers you need to pick, one for recruit school, one for career development. And I want you to go through, and however, whatever process you want to use, every department's different. Some, it's... They use a, a, a matrix, and they grade them out by points, a point system. If that's the way you want to do it, that's fine. What I want you to do, though, is to go through the process of having to look at and determine who is the best fit for your organization and, and for who you may think would be the best uh, training officer, and then be able to justify it. So go through, create documentation, select your instructors or your two training officers you're going to hire, and then provide justification for why you're going to hire each. And think about it from an HR standpoint. If you're going to hire them, you may be questioned. Well, why did you hire them? You need to be able to talk through that. So that is the, the exercises we'll do um, prior to class. There's one or two um, on generations and some other stuff we'll do uh, inside of class. But be prepared. This is a student-driven class. Lots of interaction, lots of discussion, lots of networking, very little uh, PowerPoint. So we truly used the flipped version. So if you have any questions, you can reach me, Brian Ward, um, through the Society, or my email is fireservice, slt, at yahoo.com. Um, or if Brad French is your instructor, he'll provide his information on the LMS website. So hey, look forward to uh, seeing y'all soon. Y'all take care. And again, if I can do anything, y'all let me know. Thanks.